For a competitive cyclist, trainer road high volume plans aren't high volume. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bridge of Gap Cycling channel. My name is Canton, thanks for joining me again. So today we're going to go over uh, my week in review using the Trainer Road High Volume Masters Plan. As I said last week, I had been out of town, uh, down in Austin, training with Ellis, recording our podcast, which if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. I'll link it in one of these corners. Um, so my sleep hadn't been the greatest in terms of quantity or quality. I definitely improved upon that this week getting an average of seven hours and 40 minutes per night, um, which I'll show over here. Super stoked on that, trying to get as much sleep as I possibly can while doing this much volume, especially adding intensity into it. I wanna make sure that I'm recovering enough to actually get the adaptations from the workouts that I'm doing. All right, here we go. So this is the second week of my high volume general base. The plan initially had about 14 hours scheduled, but I have chosen longer adaptations as well as um, done some, some gentle commutes on the bike to up the volume. Trainer Road high volume plans have always been looked at warily by a lot of people, um, saying that they burn you out super quickly. Um, it's, it's just too much volume. It's just too much intensity. And I think before they released the master's plan, it was too much intensity. But if you look at it, um, they're, they're generally 10 to 12 hours. And that's not high volume for a competitive cyclist. For a, for a time crunched athlete as they cater to, um, that's high volume. But comparing to pro cyclists that are training 20 to 30, 35 hours a week, 10 to 12 hours a week just isn't high volume. So looking at my week, you can see that we did 20 and a half hours essentially um, out of the 17 and a half hours that were structured rides that I either had scheduled or added onto the calendar. The hours that weren't accounted for um, with Structured riding is bike commutes um, that I, I made to work. I didn't have to do those, but it is nice to actually get outside on a bike in an enjoyable setting every once in a while. So if you look at my week, there were 17 and a half hours of structured training on the calendar. Most of those were planned and just adapted upwards in length, or you can see here I actually added on a second ride to a day. Um, the remaining about three hours were bike commutes to work, just getting out on my commuter bike and making sure I, I get a little bit of nature in as well, and instead of just being stuck on the trainer the entire time. So jumping straight into it, we had Borestone minus two. Um, that was two hours. You can see that I marked it here as easy, and it was 50%, 55%, 60%, 60%, up to 65% of FTP uh, for two hours. So just a, a easy, um, chill endurance ride. Average power was 166. Um, knocked it out and went to work that day. Tuesday was my day off, um, so we had Daniel minus four scheduled. Daniel minus four is a sweet spot workout. It has um, intervals of five minutes with three minutes of recovery in between. It was pretty chill, didn't have any issues with it. Marked it as moderate, um, which makes sense. That's just sub threshold. And then I went ahead and tacked on bald minus one afterwards. Bald minus one is just an hour of endurance, so it's just some extra volume for the legs. Again, easy. Tuesday is my day off from work, so after I finished um, those two rides, I set to recovery. Um, I made a smoothie and some, uh, some pancakes, eggs, and tried to relax as much as I could for the rest of the day. Um, trying to trying to just 
get as much recovery in as possible to form those adaptations. Wednesday we had Heinz scheduled, which is a three hour endurance ride. Heinz is three hours ranging between 50 and 67% of FTP. So pretty much all within that zone two range, um, just building long, slow miles. This is the base phase after all. So again, marked it as easy, made some breakfast, got on the bike and commuted to work. Thursday we had Napiqua, which is a threshold workout, two hours long. Now this one was tougher. It topped out at 105% of FTP, but only for a minute at a time. It was over unders going from 90% to 105%. Um, basically eight sets of up and down. And it, it was pretty tough. It was very doable for sure, but it was pretty tough. Uh, looks like an average power of 183 at the then 279 watt FTP. After I finished this workout though, we did get an adaptation suggested, an AI FTP update. This is the first one. So Trainer Road AI detected that the FTP went up 2.2% since our test, which was 285 watts. Um, went ahead and accepted it. And like I said, we will be testing against that come time for the next FTP test. Afterwards, again, made some breakfast, got ready for the day, hopped on the bike and rode to work. Friday was another three hour endurance day. This was Marsh. Marsh, once again, switches back and forth between 64 and 55% of FTP. I did bump it up a little at points um, because it, it felt a touch low. And when I bumped up the power, we were still in the zone two range. We weren't exceeding that, um, but I, I took it back down near the end and just to chill and make sure I wasn't I wasn't overworking myself. Again, marked it as easy because it was quite easy. Saturday was the big ride of the week. It was four and a half hours, four and a half hours on the indoor trainer. Scheduled this ride stays right at 55 to 56 percent of FTP. I did tack it up because my heart rate when we were sitting at 55 percent was in the low 130s. Um, so I took it up until about three and a half hours in when my heart rate started to touch the 140s um, consistently and then I dropped it down. Um, so we were looking more at like 65% of FTP for the majority of this ride. Um, Mentally, it wasn't easy. It was four and a half hours on the bike. Um, I, I watched the Call of a Lifetime, uh, Lifetime Grand Prix series, the entire series, um, as well as played some Legend of Zelda on my Nintendo Switch uh, while I was riding. Um, but physically, it was, it was very easy. I fueled, um, I had four bottles, each with uh, a decent amount of carbs in them. And I also had some Goo brand uh, lemonade flavored chews that were pretty disgusting, but there were 22 grams of carbs each pack. So it, it was something to help fuel the ride. Um, four and a half hours down though, it was, it was a, a mental slog. I got off, I made a stack of Kodiak cakes, I had some breakfast tacos, and I took a nice recovery nap uh, post-shower. And then today, um, it was, I, I didn't work Saturday, I didn't commute to work Friday. Um, I was at 19 and a half hours and wanted to hit, hit 20 hours of the week, um, so I rode to and from work again today. Um, and ticked it right to that 20 and a half hours or just under mark uh, with, with my commute. Those commutes are not using a power meter. Um, they're just using my, my Apple Watch with its heart rate monitor. Um, 
and I'm making sure my heart rate isn't going above 135. So it's very low zone two, high zone one, um, just trying to keep the intensity as low as possible, but get a little bit more volume in the legs. So yeah, guys, that's my week of training in review. I appreciate you stopping by to take a look at it. Um, trainer road so far has been really good. I'm super satisfied with how the plan has been going so far. I know we're only a couple of weeks in, um, but I'm really enjoying this master's program. Um, only having two days of intensity per week and then the rest being um, endurance based. I'm, I'm excited for how it brings me into the season. The Texas bike racing season did technically start this weekend with the Cedar Hill Classic. I didn't participate um, just because we're just in day season right now and I'm looking to peak a little bit later than uh, the majority of riders around here. But this is what 20 hours a week on the bike looks like. I appreciate you stopping by to watch. Please go check out our podcast and other videos if you get a chance to. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure to like this video, share it with anybody that it might interest, and subscribe so you can see more.